than the fellow that's got the notes now. I don't know, see? But I prepared it, and I came and delivered it. So there's, there's the scriptures. I could give you a hundred more. Read Ezekiel 36, 37. They're better than anything I wrote. And, and uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 40 tells us you got to comfort Israel. But you don't want to hear all the messages in my heart. I mean, we'll be here for a week. But this whole book, do you know this whole thing is full of the mess? You, you take what little goody I gave you tonight and start reading this Bible in the, in the light of what I told you, and you'll find the whole thing talks about what I talked about tonight. Because you know what this whole world system's all about? It's setting up the millennial kingdom where Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from. The whole, the whole structure. And everything in here talks about it. And John and Daniel, oh, how precious. When, when John looked back and saw all the kingdoms, the eight kingdoms of the world that's going to persecute Israel, and Daniel saw them from Nebuchadnezzar down when he saw the Babylonians, the Medo Persians, the Grecians, the Roman Empire being split in the east and the west, and then the ten toes, and out of those ten toes, but you see, I didn't have time to go into all this. I just jumped to the ten toes that's being formed in this part of the world now. Out of those are going to come forth the millennium. And Jesus is going to crush them. But it's real. It's real. In 1972, I'll never forget. Never forget. And I was with this man right here, Don Parker. And he stopped the bus as we went down between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And I, I'd always loved the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. That was my favorite song. But I'd seen it in the abstract. I was born in the hills of Tennessee. I didn't, I didn't see an electric light bulb until I was 15 years old. So you talk about God calling people and giving them a message. He gave me one. I have no idea why God gave me the message he gave me. And this man here rode all the way from Alabama one time to say, God wants you to go on television. I said, not me. He said, yes, and here's the first $500. God spoke to me for you to go on television. We had no idea how we could ever go. Well, I said, we'll take his $500 and we'll put it in the bank. <laughs> But he was right. God put us on television. We delivered this message twice a week. Now, it was, it was so received. Not that all agree with it, but, but, I, but God uses us to say some things and do some things that people latch on to and begin to study, and they watch it. Clergymen, ministers all over the city are watching it. Jews are watching it. Rabbis. Everyone's watching it. And, the, and, the, and the, we're on an educational channel sponsored by college. And they liked it so well, they asked us to do a special program on this tour, talking about our Hebrew class and about the college. And the, 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 the station liked it so well that they put us on twice a week now. We're on every Tuesday and Thursday night, delivering this message. But let me tell you something. God promised to bless us if we love Jerusalem yes. and to prosper us if we love Jerusalem. That's just as true as John 3.16 just as true. And God gives each one of us a message, and woe to us if we don't deliver it. If we don't deliver the message God gave to us, woe to us. Paul said, I have a message God gave me, and I have to deliver it. Jeremiah one time, we get tired. Yes, it's not always easily accepted. I know this is, this is not the message that probably 10,000 people are going to come Sunday morning to sit under the spout where the glory pours out and hear. I know that. And I hope you accept that as I mean it. But I know what the Christian world today is looking for, especially in America. Sure. And I know this message doesn't exactly deliver it. And I had to struggle with this for many years. In 1972, when I came over here, listen, I was very disappointed. I could have easily gone the other way. And I went back home, and I, I was expecting a Miami or a Dallas or a New York or a Washington. You see, I just sat in Washington, D.C. and in New York City. I, and I come from those type places. And then I come over here and I saw the ruins at Capernaum. And I saw Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem. I saw Hebron, where King David was an anointed king and then moved his office to Jerusalem. I saw all the, Bethlehem where the Lord was born. And I questioned. I truthfully, I'm being honest with you, I truthfully went back and said, you mean I'm serving a God of that country? I don't know if I can handle this or not. But God never let me forget that sign when he stopped the bus in Bethlehem. And it said Bethlehem. And I realized all of a sudden those people were real. They hurt. They bled. Just like I did. 
And I also realized, and I wish time would permit me, as far as the minister's here's sake at least, to go into Numbers 23 when Balaam and Balak, and I know you've preached it so many times, but let me tell you something else. Sit down mathematically and figure out where the tabernacle was and where those tribes were of the Levites and the Kohanes and see what it made. When you see the largest point and then these and these tribes and these tribes, it makes a cross. And that's what Balaam saw. When he took him on the heights and he looked down upon Israel in their tents, he saw a cross. And he saw the nation of Israel there struggling in that desert. And he said, I can't curse this people whom God has blessed. And he offered a blessing. And Balak got mad and he said, why called you here to curse them and you blessed them? Do you see? And he says, but I have to bless what God has blessed. Amen. Listen to me, my friend. When you look down upon this people from a distance and you see them, you have to see them through spiritual eyes. You can't be down here on the level they are and be all this spiritual that you might expect this people in this land to be. They're here struggling with the economy. They're trying to make a living. They're struggling and hurting and bleeding and dying just as they were then. And as we look down from a Christian perspective, we have to also see the cross. We have to see Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a Jew. Revelation 5.5 5 doesn't say he was a Jew. It says he is the tribe, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That was the Holy Spirit saying it after he went back to glory. I think it's a mandate from God. It's not an option that we as Christians support these people. It's a mandate from God. Yeah. Listen, I'm going, I was preaching another sermon here. It's another class.